Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, Diggy546. This one is gonna be on Kayvon Thibodeau. My first film session, probably about a month and a half. Probably, at least. Anyway, uh, I just had to get on here. I, I had made a video about Thibodeau. Two weeks ago, just didn't get to upload it. But these plays, uh, his past game that he made were next level compared to his career so far. Today, or I guess now two days ago, he looked like the player we drafted him to be, top five pick. Looked like he took over the game, especially in that first quarter or the first two quarters. Really took over the game. And I'm just going to be showing a couple of plays that he made. Um, and and, and we'll, we'll get into it. We'll talk through it. But Thibodeau has arrived. Hopefully, if he can turn this on and keep this going, the Giants might be able to win a playoff game or two. Not saying we're, we're going to go crazy or anything, but we might be able to win a playoff game or two. But let's start this off. So Washington thought that for some reason, they, they just thought that they should continue to hand the ball off to Curtis Samuel. I think he ran it like five times for like two yards or three yards or something like that. Thibodeau does not like Curtis Samuel. So let's start this off uh, from the beginning. It's just like some, they, they think they're tricking someone. But Thibodeau is lined up right over top of number 10, Curtis Samuel, on the left side of your screen. I mean, I don't really see any point in circling him. He's right across from number 10 on the left side of your screen. So they're going to try to run this jet sweep pretty much. They got some motion from the tight end, trying to cause some misdirection. You know, they're, they're motioning the tight end left. It looks like they're handing this off left. Everything looks like left. You see the, the left guard and the left tackle. And the tight end going to go uh, block the backside. That's what it looks like. But this is uh, just a sweep. It's a sweep to Curtis Samuel. And if you watch Thibodeau, I'll just play it in real time. Thibodeau's just going to just follow this whole thing. Notice that Curtis Samuel has the ball and blow this play up. This is the second play from scrimmage. And this is really him setting the tone. Like, you want to leave me unblocked? I'm going to make my impact. And again, you'll, you'll see him do this again, but he he did not allow Curtis Samuel to run the ball. So anybody that's watched me on this channel knows how much I love when defensive ends are disciplined. It, it stops things from getting leaked out, stops big plays from happening. And if you're being unblocked as a defensive end, again, Thibodeau is going to be on the left side of your screen, the edge rusher there. If you're being unblocked as a defensive end, there's something fishy going on. You don't want to take the bait. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can still blow up a play, but most of the time you don't want to take up a, the, you, you just don't want to take the bait. So you're just going to see Thibodeau crash down right here. He's unblocked and he wants to make sure that Heineke isn't keeping this because if Thibodeau, and I, I this, is, this is going to be a debut of my artwork today, Thibodeau, if he just continues down this way and just goes straight after the running back, Heineke can keep this ball. And, and go upfield and, you know, he's got a little bit of space there. Not as much looking at this because you got Julian Love here. You got Jalen Smith who can crash down this way. Uh, you got, I can't tell who this is. I think this is Pinnock maybe up here. Can't tell. Might be Cordell Flott. Looks like 28. But anyway, Thibodeau does a great job of coming here, stopping, making uh, Heineke make a decision. And when he hands this ball off, when he hands this ball off to Brian Robinson, he's able to stop, recognize it, and then go and make the tackle. All right, so remember I said Thibodeau didn't like Curtis Samuel. You're going to see a little bit more of this right here. And uh, here's Thibodeau right here, right on the left side of your screen. And I'm just going to start this off. For some reason, they were infatuated with handing this ball off to Curtis Samuel. Brian Robinson was averaging 7.4 yards per carry. Washington should have ran this ball 14, uh, not 14 times. They should have ran this ball 40 times, you know, between Robinson and Gibson. I think they got two good running backs there. Maybe you do sprinkle in Curtis Samuel, but but between Robinson and Gibson, they should have ran this ball about 40 times. They ended up running, I think, maybe 28 times. And Brian Robinson only got 12 carries. Awful uh, management of, of, of the players by um, Scott Turner, I think, is their offensive coordinator. Anyway, uh, here's another attempt to hand this off to Curtis Samuel. Thibodeau is on the left side of your screen, and he's just going to run down this play. Nothing much. Just watch him run it down. 
run down Curtis Samuel. He stops, did what he did this last play I just showed you, stops to make sure he makes a decision. Once he makes that decision, he just runs this down. Just runs it down. Tackle for loss. So this time Thibodeau is right over here uh, on the up opposite side of the field from where he's been most of the time. And again, remember I said that Thibodeau didn't, didn't like Curtis Samuel and he, he's not letting him do anything. This is more of that. And he also doesn't like tight ends. He said he, he said he can't stand tight ends in his last interview. So just watch him blow up this play. They try to block him with the tight end. They left him unblocked a bunch try to, to try to fool him. They, they, they tried to block him with tight ends a couple of times. And just watch what happens when they try to block a big-time player with the tight end here. So another sweep to Curtis Samuel, another fake misdirection like it's going off to uh, Gibson. And Curtis Samuel's going to take this. And Thibodeau just blows it up. So you saw Curtis Samuel get the ball and everything. Now just focus on Thibodeau. He's going to blow this tight end up. Stop Curtis Samuel on his track because he just pushed this guy into him. And then he's going to go and get him. All right, so this next play, Thibodeau is number five on the left side of your screen, right in front of Julian Love, number 20. And I showed you a ton of great plays he made, but he didn't have a flawless game. Uh, he did give up a couple of kind of bootlegs, kind of, he, he gave up contained a couple of times in the game, which is, I mean, it's going to happen. But again, I just wanted to show you, he still is developing. He still is learning. And this is a run blitz here by Spags. You see everybody crowding the line of scrimmage. You got uh, Landon Collins down there. You got Nick McLeod down there. You got Julian Love there. You got Jalen Smith up there. A, lot, a ton of people in the box. If you count, you got one. Let me, let me use my counter. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can kind of count Julian Love. You got nine people in the box almost. You know, heavy formation by Washington. They got one, two, three tight ends in the game. So you're going to meet that with a heavy formation too. So this is essentially just a run blitz by by uh, by Wink. I was going to say by Spags for some reason. But this is a run blitz, blitz from Wink. And everybody thinks this ball is going to Brian Robinson. And he's just able to keep this ball. Heineke keeps this ball and is able to get some some uh, yards with it. But keep your eye on number five, Kayvon Thibodeau. He's going to crash down on that running back like nobody's business. Right for the running back. And by the time he realizes that running back doesn't have it, by the time you see Brian Robinson fake cutting back, Heineke is already broken contained. And that's Thibodeau's fault. I mean, you, you hate to see it. You know, it's, it's a good play call by them. And it's not to say he had a, you know, he had a horrible game or he made a horrible play, but a little bit more discipline, he would be able to, uh, you know, to stop this from happening. But another thing that gives him brownie points for a guy that they said in this draft was going to be a guy with a low motor, a guy that gives up, takes plays off. First off, you saw Thibodeau on the sideline a bunch of times out of breath. Those are the only plays he was able to take off when he literally could not stand up and was out of breath. But watch Thibodeau run this guy down. He's going to run him down. And it's, these are things that are, you know, these are things that are going to go over well with the fan base, with the coaches, with his teammates. This is who he is. And I just really, it's still a bad taste in my mouth that that rumor was ever out about him, you know, taking plays off and giving up. All right. So these next two plays are going to be the two biggest plays of the game. This first one is, is going to be a play you all recognize. And I'm going to play this in real time just so you all can see the speed from number five. Not much to analyze. I'll do a quick, a quick little analysis of it, you know, because he started off with power, went to speed. And that's how he was able to get around that edge and make this game change and play that really won us the game. But uh, watch number five on the right side of your screen. Edge rusher standing up. He's one on one. He starts off with that power, starts off with the long arms. You see that punch. Watch that punch. He gets right into this left tackle's chest. Boom, right there, drives him back, and then uses the speed. As soon as he gets, to, as soon as he gets him off balance, he uses that speed, uses his hands to get his hands off of him, and gets around and just, like, hammers the quarterback. Completely just attacked the football at that point. Heineke had no chance of holding on to that, and it's an easy scoop and score. So this is going to be the last play I show 
Uh, the footage I have is a little bit blurry, so bear with me for here uh, for for this play. Anyway, Thibodeau is number five. He's going to drop back in the coverage on this play, and this is the biggest play of the game for Thibodeau for me. I mean, of course the touchdown was huge, the forced fumble was huge, and we probably don't win without that. But uh, to seal this game, pretty much. Stopping him at the one-yard line was huge, especially being a guy that's not usually playing off the ball like this, not usually playing, you know, 20 yards downfield or 15 yards downfield in coverage. For him to come up and make this stop was huge. Um, Wink is dialing up a blitz. He's going to leave this middle of the field wide open to the point to where I think it was uh, the slot here. I think this was – I don't know who this is. But he's on, he's on a drag route across the field, and Heineke should have probably hit him on his drag route, being completely honest with you. But uh, Heineke is, is Heineke, and he's, he's not, you know, he's, if he was a better quarterback, probably don't win this game either way. But I'm going to start this off. Again, Heineke, this is Jahan Dotson right here. He should just hit Dotson right here. Right here. He, he, the pressure's coming, but he, he's got to get rid of the ball right here. And he waits for it, steps up. Still, he should still hit him again. He should still throw him, throw it to him right there because he's a much better athlete than Heineke is. But Heineke tries to take it into the end zone himself. And while I'm talking about this, I want you all to keep an eye on uh, on Thibodeau. He's dropping back into coverage. He's kind of just riding this tight end deep down the field. And if you can follow the pixels, <laughs> he's in the end zone. He sees Heineke take off, and I'll just let you watch this. He puts his foot in the ground. Let's watch this again. He puts his foot in the ground and just breaks to the to the goal line and stops him. That is a huge stop, in my opinion. I mean, that's a huge stop because without this, they're in the end zone. They're, um, you know, they're going to to probably go for two, uh, and who knows how the game turns out. So. Just for him to be able to hustle like that, for him to be able to have the awareness to see what's going on in an unfamiliar spot because he's usually rushing the quarterback, I think was huge. And uh, it shows how much he's growing. So, um, as always, I'll give my, my last little two cents here. Kayvon Thibodeau has showed flashes these last couple of weeks. I think Aziz being back has helped him a lot. Uh, I think Dexter Lawrence and Leonard Williams out there. I mean, with them out there, I think Bobby from Talking Giants said that the pressure rate for our front four, our starting front four out there is 40%, which is pretty good. So I think with all those guys out there, it's helping Thibodeau a lot. Uh, these primetime games, he shows up. He he shows up and shows out. Hopefully he can carry this to a week-to-week -week kind of thing and be that dominant alpha pass rusher. Aziz can be that 1B one, that one pass rusher. Or that Batman, not Batman, but that Robin pass rusher. And I think right now, I, I, up until now, I would say Aziz was the better pure pass rusher. But if Kayvon can put together games like this, if he can trust himself and play as fast as he played on Sunday night, I think the sky is the limit. I'm excited to see him finally break out. And uh, hopefully he can, hopefully we can ride this good play. Hopefully we can keep this, this going on. And uh, see if we can carry this into the playoffs. So that'll wrap up this film session. Uh, you guys let me know what you're thinking of how Thibodeau is playing. Uh, tell me who you're looking for to, to, to do a film session on next week. And uh, let's get ready to go out there and compete. <laughs> and try to compete with the Minnesota Vikings and all those weapons over there. If you made it this deep into the video, come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily draft content secondarily and during the season i'm going to be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the nfl games and everything nfl so if you made this deep go ahead and join the d6 squads